Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm actually on my way to work and I wanted to kind of show this bank's iDash and how it works as it's going into or getting ready to go into regen mode. So we're at 98% on our DPF regen or at least on the regen trigger. Uh, the soot level is actually still only showing 84%. But as I was saying in a previous video, uh, I believe they both work hand in hand. Like, so if the, uh, if the soot level would happen to reach 100% before the actual regen trigger, then it would probably, and this is just my speculation, but I think it would go ahead and push the regen trigger to, to, to go on up to 100 and go ahead and uh, regen. But in this case, we are at 98% on our regen trigger and only 84% on the actual uh, soot level. So as this climbs up to 100%, I'll come back and I'll show you the uh, what happens there. As soon as that thing turns to 100%, the 84% will climb its way up to 100% relatively quick and then kick on the regen. Also notice the exhaust gas temp you're 730 or seven, a little over 700. Uh, and then the, the third one down on the left is the exhaust gas temp behind the DPF. So notice where they're at. And the one up there at the, uh, the top on the left is actually uh, the exhaust gas temp, I believe at the manifold or like right, right behind the manifold. And so when you give it the gas, then that one really, you know, you can see it really heat up. And then as you just let off the gas, it'll cool right back down. But the exhaust gas temp, the third one down on the left, is actually the one that you will see the big change in uh, whenever it goes into regen. Now, if you notice, the uh, soot level is actually increasing pretty quick it's up to 88 percent and we're still at 98 percent on the trigger and i apologize for this shaky camera uh i didn't have any way to hold my camera i was just driving to work this morning and it's getting close and i wanted to kind of get this and explain how the bank's i dash works for keeping track of the regen and and uh seeing you know how this thing works so we just now kicked over to 99 percent and we're still at 88 percent actually just kind of hit 89 percent on the other one so my truck didn't go into regen on my way to work and i just got off work and i'm leaving right now and it just now clicked over to 100 percent so as you can see it's at 100 percent but the soot level is still at 88 percent the truck's not up to temperature i'm just now leaving work and so i think what's going to happen is it the truck gets actually up to temperature to be able to start the regen, then that 88% is gonna go up to 100 all of a sudden to be able to kick it into regen. You see the temperature gauge is actually just now coming up off of 160. The exhaust gas temp is down like 200 right now. Cause like I say, the, the truck is not up to operating temperature. So as all these temperatures come up, then it'll actually kick that on up into regen. The soot level actually is going down a little bit, which is typical. It kind of tends to go down as after you start the truck and it runs for a little bit, it'll count down a few percentage points. Again, I apologize for the shaky camera, but I can't hold this thing steady while I'm driving down the road. So just bear with me on that. My temperature's uh, coming up to about 180 or so. And as it gets closer to 210, this thing should kick right on over. So as you can see right there, it went from 88% on the region uh, or on the uh, soot level. That's the um, third one on third one down on the right hand side. It went from 88 
and jump to 100% once everything's kind of got up to temperature. And you can see the exhaust gas temperature, which is the third one down on the left side at like 468. Well, as this system stays active, which you can see now down at the very bottom left-hand corner, it says active instead of off. And as this goes through this burn, you'll see the uh, exhaust gas temp go from like the 400s uh, all the way up into over a thousand. Like it'll be pushing a thousand, eleven hundred, and sometimes even pushing twelve hundred if you're you know, maybe getting on it a little bit. Um, but it'll stay kind of in that range over a thousand degrees once this system really gets up and running and, and you know gets everything heated up real good. You can see the exhaust gas uh, again that's the third one down on the left is now pushing 600 degrees and it's still climbing and the soot level actually now says 101 percent but as this temperature gets up to that thousand degree mark or so you're going to see those numbers really start coming down on the soot level so now that we're up to right about a thousand degrees these numbers are starting to count down and you see the the soot level the third one down on the right side uh, it was at 98 and now 97 so it's 96 so it counts down fairly quick once everything gets up to temperature on the Chevy trucks they don't have anything on the dash that indicates that it is in regen mode there's no lights that come on or anything but when you get down to an idle like this and the slower speeds, uh, you can smell it. So that's that's one way I guess you kind of can tell if you're in regen, but you don't smell that as long as you're driving down the highway. But when you come to a stop like that, you do get that smell coming into the cab. So I'm down to 48% on the regen and I've only gone about 10 miles and it's gone about halfway so it takes about 20 miles or so uh, for it to actually get all the way down to zero now this is one thing that makes this Banks i-dash worth having if you don't want to have to park your truck in the middle of a regen cycle you have this gauge telling you that this is on and all you have to do is just drive on down the road a little ways and you know continue this out this evening I'm probably not going to do that because I'd like to get home and I'm only at 46% and I'm getting pretty close to home right now. Uh, so I don't know if I want to drive it an extra, you know, 15, 20, well, 15 minutes or so probably to be able to get this all the way back down to zero. Uh, what will happen though, whenever I get home, if I turn the truck off, it will just go into regen first thing tomorrow on my way to work and then finish this out pretty much. So I just pulled in the driveway and I'm down to 24%. So what I'm going to end up doing is in the morning, I'll start the truck up and let it idle for a little while and warm up before I leave. That way for sure tomorrow, it will have enough time to finish the regen cycle by the time that I get to work. A lot of the stuff that I've read has said that one of the worst things that you can do for these diesel trucks is to shut your vehicle off in the middle of a regen. Well, if you don't have the bank's iDash or some sort of a monitor like that, then you don't know if it's in a regen other than maybe just the smell of it or you can kind of hear a little exhaust note change that kind of stuff so with the iDash you can monitor that and see where you're actually at in your regen cycle and decide whether you want to turn it off or not and if you know say tomorrow you're going on a long enough trip that you're going to be able to finish that cycle out that's fine you know you can you can run that but where it really comes into play is if you're doing a lot of short trips and your truck doesn't have enough time to warm up and actually go into the regen cycle again and finish out the burn and if you do this multiple times just over and over and you're not letting your truck finish that cycle because it's never getting up to the full operating temperature i guess eventually you'd have to take it into the dealer and have them do a parked regen to actually finish it out so I'm back in the truck the following morning and it's a cold morning. It's only about 20, 27 degrees. And so the truck right now is actually pretty cold um, and the regen is off. But as soon as everything warms up to operating temperature, then the regen will kick back on and finish. 
So you can see right now, the uh, regen is at 21%, but the exhaust gas temps is only at about 250, 260. So I'm driven just a few miles and you can see the exhaust gas temps are coming back up. And actually, it just now went active. I don't know if I caught that on the, uh, on the camera or not. But as the exhaust hit about 450, then it went ahead and went active on the, on the regen. So by the time I get back to work, this thing should be counted all the way back down and everything reset and starting all over again. And that's gonna give me the new mileage and new time between regens. So one thing I noticed, the soot level doesn't really start counting down, it seems like, until after you've gotten around a thousand degrees or so on the temperature. But once it goes past that, then it really starts counting the soot level down pretty quick. But it takes a few minutes actually for it to get up to that temperature. And I was just at a thousand, but I came down a big hill and not giving it the gas really. So I think that's why it cooled down so much here. Now I'm climbing a hill again and you can see it's counting back up. So another thing that I found too, if you notice the transmission says it's in eighth gear. So I'm running on a road where I'm running about 50 miles an hour. If you let the transmission shift all the way down, it brings your RPMs down really low, then your exhaust gas temperatures stay a lot lower. So right now I'm running about 1400 RPMs and it's keeping the exhaust gas temps uh, way up there. You know, and you can see it's pushing almost 1200 degrees at, you know, like 1160 or so. And with that being that way, it burns the soot off a lot faster. So if you're on the interstate or something and cruising at 70 in 10th gear, then this actually will keep the heat up and burn off a little bit quicker. And just like a minute ago, where I was actually going down a hill for a pretty good period and the RPMs were extremely low, then the, get the exhaust temperatures actually dropped down to like 800 or so. And it wouldn't burn it any soot off and it hadn't changed for a long time until after I got off of that hill and then started where I could accelerate again and then kind of keep the RPMs up a little bit. So again, I apologize for this shaky camera. So this morning on my way to work, it just made it down to 2% on the regen. So now I'm back in my truck again this evening and leaving. And this is actually, again, where that, that banks can come in handy because if I wasn't on my way to work, I would have driven on down the road a little bit and ran that until the regen kicked off so I wouldn't have to turn the truck off in the middle of the regen. This evening, we're pulling out of the lot and like I say, I'm, on, I'm, I'm at 2%. So I, I thought really by driving home and it getting down to 20% by the time I got home, I thought sure that it would kick into regen this morning and be able to get through the percent, like get all the way down through the count and not have to shut it off again. But like I say, it, it was 2% and I couldn't go ahead and drive around because I was on my way to work. So anyways, this should be it and should totally get us out of regen. And it's good to know this stuff. And that's, that's why I kind of keep going on about the Banks iDash because it gives you the option to like be able to see this information and i absolutely love having that information so something new kind of happened here the dpf trigger went down to three percent where it had been at a hundred so evidently because the regen made it down to two percent whenever i started the truck up now it says that you know basically the regen was completed enough to go ahead and turn the regen back off the dpf soot le level actually is at zero right now so as you can see, the DPF soot level is at 0% right now, and then the regen trigger is at 3%. So evidently, even though it wasn't completely finished with the regen when I parked it, it started. It read the levels of that as I started it back up this evening and said, hey, that's good enough, the regen's done. And if you notice the numbers on it, now, says it's been 729 miles between regens 
in 1442 minutes. So another thing that you will notice whenever you do a regen is the fuel mileage. And you can see the fuel mileage now average over the last 37 miles, which is actually pretty close to what it took for the regen. I was on, I had filled up with fuel right as the regen was starting and re reset my mileage. And so essentially 37 miles is what it took, but it took that because of having to get the truck up to operating temperature twice. So once whenever I left work and once whenever I was on my way uh, leaving home to go to work. So thanks for checking out the video. Like I say, I, I really just kind of wanted to share this process because a lot of people don't know what to expect whenever your vehicle is regening or you know the process and i didn't either until now that i've gone through a few regens and 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 kind of understand it a little bit more so i thought i'd kind of share this information and especially by having that banks i dash on here it really helps to show that information so on on the gm trucks they don't have an indicator or anything saying that the vehicle is in regen mode uh, gm says that they do that to keep it as seamless as possible and as user friendly basically that way the operator never even knows that it's going on and it's not a bother, not a hassle. There's not lights coming on and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on or whatever. Um, they're, they're trying to integrate it into the operation of the vehicle as seamlessly as possible. But I actually don't like that myself. I'd rather know when it's going on. And, you know, the vast majority of people say the problems are because you're short tripping and not completing the regen cycles and that's what's actually causing it or causing a lot of people to have dpf problems so with all that being said i thought i would get the bank's eye dash and then monitor all this stuff and i can kind of keep a check on it myself and you know see what's what's going on with it and that's kind of my outlook on it and i think that 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 is one of the best things that i've spent money on with this truck is just having that monitor and being able to see what's going on so anyways, like I was saying, if you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate you hit that thumbs up button. I hope this video helps somebody out and we'll see you on the next one.